Thank you everyone for coming. I think maybe we'll just get started. Uh, well, thank you for spending your uh, an hour here with Sophie. And some of you have worked with her in the past. Some of them may just run into her everywhere on campus. Uh, this is her last time, not last day, but last okay. time that she would talk about her life and experience at UC, um, especially when she worked with Liz, Mark, Sarah in the press, and uh, Arlene in the DSC, but she also spent a lot of time on her own research. She's from China, South China Normal University. If you don't know where it is, it's in Guangzhou, the very south uh, capital city of Guangdong province. She's a professor in School of Economics and Management. And uh, in Chinese, there's a, a, cap, there's a word called yuanfen. Uh, it means predetermined relationship, something meant to happen. I think the, the fact that Sophie could come here to Cincinnati, to UC, and working with us for a year and a half, it's a big yuanfen. It's a, it's a big deal. So I'm, I have a little mixed feeling because um, I feel Sophie's like my colleague and friend. And she gave me a lot of uh, great tips also as a mother. She has a, a daughter who's going to college soon. So, but today, um, she's gonna talk about um, the working experience here and some of her research, but then also trips. Um, she prepared 50 pages of slices. I said, Sophie, I only gave you 40 minutes to talk, so I will make sure the time is there. But, um, um, so, ready? Yeah. yeah let's get yeah. started. First of all, I have to, I think I need to express my grateful to everyone because I have come here for more than one year. It's nearly one and a half year. And we have made friends here and I have got many, many help from all of you. And I owe my thanks to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> And today I would like to uh, talk about some experience here and uh, what I have to, uh, what I have done uh, done here, and uh, this is what I have uh, I did at the library and outside the library actually. Uh, firstly, I hope I have helped at the two units I have stayed uh, for one year such as at the DSC and at the press. <laughs> and I think I have ha helped a little at the press for the e-journals uh, to, uh, for uh, the e-journals e uh, making and uh, I helped to, uh, to make clear about the procedures, although I haven't finished it very uh, thoroughly. And uh, I helped a little at the essay, such as for uh, do a little thing about the digital humanity life guides and the test of digital humanity uh, tutorial for as a tester. And then I uh, attended many, many lectures uh, uh, include some teaching methods, some teaching materials, day to day, and other many, uh, like the uh, technical parts given by Richard, and many other uh, uh, chances. Uh, I have to owe my thanks to, oh sorry. Uh, or Amy. Yeah, Amy, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because I have talked uh, to Chen Hong someday uh, before, I haven't got any uh, so much chances to attend so many meeting, meetings and lectures here. It's a great chance for me, so thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I uh, uh, studied um, data collection and analyzing technology from many of our colleagues and then studied on teaching method and visit many places beautiful places, then I will show you some pictures uh, later. And uh, I visit some teachers outside, outside this campus and they give me uh, much more help, uh, even, uh, even uh, uh, more help than I, I have expected. 
And then I accompanied my daughter, as Hong has said, uh, she graduated uh, from her upper school this uh, week, yes. And she will go to California for her university career. And I am excited that she can be uh, enrolled by the CMC College, yeah. And I keep touching with my graduate students with this classes and job hunting opportunities I give to classes this term. That's why I seldom come here at the end of the week. Uh, okay, and I also worked uh, in local community as a uh, volunteer. So uh, what I got in this period, I think the most important thing is I have made many friends here. I feel very warm here, really. Um, every time when I talk to my stu uh, students or my friends and my families, I will say, yeah, people are very nice here. Yeah, I met very nice people here. I feel uh, just me make me comfortable and um, relax like at home and get much help from all of you and know more about this country. Uh, uh, I think I can make little, less and less mistakes when <laughs> talking to the others. I hope I, I won't be so awkward anymore in the future. And I'm confident to say that I can live alone by myself and in any places. So I'm happy here. Uh, before I give the academic presentation, I would like to show some pictures of my life here. Uh, let me see uh, here. Uh, the most in interesting thing is I went to many different, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, I think I, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, I, I went to many libraries. I uh, found that they are very interested. Uh, this is a Baptist library at the, I think it's at the BC, BC library, yeah. And then I, uh, where is it? Oh, this is the library at one of the Boston universities, which can recognize it. Who can recognize it? <laughs> I, I like that clock on the wall and this uh, glass shelf. So if it's raining, uh, we can just uh, get the shelf there. It's at the uh, Brandeis campus. And I hope I have other library. Oh, uh, it's not in a good order, so I just uh, shoot this um, uh, randomly. This is the day-to-day. And this is another day today, today, this year's day today. And this is the shoe. I think Richard did that for us. Is it? No? I think that's our, our learning, learning about libraries day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look very happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to get the tool, to, to get the toy. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I like th all the activities here, like the e-learning showcase. Uh, it makes me feel that even if you have a little idea about the renovation, uh, about the uh, uh, innovation, you can just show to the others and get ideas from the others. It's a good step, it's a good start, yeah. And uh, uh, this is, me and Liz and Noah and uh, Jonathan at the DSC. Uh, this is my daughter. I uh, go to the last soup with her as a uh, as, uh, volunteer. And this is, I, I have to give my thanks, thanks to Liz and Mark. You give me the chance to study online for the OTN. Yeah, although we didn't use that uh, flat platform, but I learned a lot from that. And it practiced my hearing. <laughs> 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 uh, 
at the very early days. <laughs> <And Elvis>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> and this is Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah. And I, I remember her presentation is very interesting with the uh, interactive interaction part and this technology show co showcase I like it very much this is the first presentation presentation I I went to at the I think it's at that was that Claremont that's, I think that's Claremont. Kentucky yeah. No, I think we, it was Claremont. We went to, we did one of the uh, uh, OER yeah. presentations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Amy. And these other uh, libraries I have collected, uh, these other LASUP students, I have teach the, I have taught them how to cook Chinese food. <laughs> this is a press uh, meeting, and I like these such kind of these decorations it make me uh, uh, <laughs> familiar with the <laughs> customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Halloween. Huh? Halloween. Is it Halloween? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like it very much. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, Arlene. She uh, gave me many chances to meet with the other librarians and go to meet uh, different people to study. Thank you very much. This is the chance she gives me to go to the H uh, HSL. I like these uh, activities at the gate of the uh, front door. There are always such kind of activities. I think it's a very good thing to see all these activities to let the students uh, get uh, get some others focus or attention on them and uh, uh, show them. And I like this dog. It always appeared on the uh, emergency condition. It's a therapy dog. I, I know that, but I don't know how to express that. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Uh, and I think this one is the bronze desk, uh, desk information desk. I'm not sure about that. Thanks for this. <laughs> 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 this is her son and what is that? I. Gingerbread. We had a Christmas party at my <laughs> house, and we had a gingerbread uh, house building activity. So Sophie and who was your partner? Uh, my son. son. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sophie. <laughs> no, she he's smarter than I. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there he is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's my youngest, yes. And my dog. <laughs> so cute. And I have attended many other meetings, uh huh, and I got many chances from the others. Thanks. This is the first uh, uh, academic meeting I went to at the, uh, I think it's near the HSL. The first formal thing. You gave the presentation there, Liz. Do you, do you remember that? Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yes. That was oh, research week. That was research week, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I like the uh, uh, environment here and the, the spacious place and the, there are many chairs and uh, relaxable uh, places. I, I like it very much because students can do what they like here and it's a place that they want to go. Yeah, it's not just a place to, to uh, borrow books. Okay, I, I would like to stop here because of the time limitation and then uh, my presentation here. Okay, the uh, my presentation is about three investigations I have done on web uh, about uh, three different country. One is the uh, investigation on the UK University's DHC 
development status. And one is the inv uh, investigation on the uh, other side, the U.S. University's DHC development. And one is on uh, investigation on China Public Library DHC uh, development. Why I want to do such kind of uh, investigation? Because uh, in China, uh, higher education libraries, academic libraries are not so active in digital humanities area. And there are not so many digital humanity centers there. So I just want to make uh, clear that why, why the digital humanities here are so active and many of the digital humanities uh, center are uh, in libraries. Why? And that's the first question of mine. So I want to uh, understand more about that and want to uh, make comparison about the different countries, university uh, DHCs. And then uh, in China, I, I have said that uh, higher education libraries are not so active. But on the other hand, public libraries are very active in this field. So I, um, I did another uh, investigation on the public libraries, but I uh, did it in another way. I just want to, I, I I want to uh, get the relationship of the public libraries, uh, DHCs, and the environment. I want to know the mot motivation of such kind of DHCs. So, uh, these two, uh, these three investigation are both. Uh, conducted because of that uh, that status that in in this modern age profession oriented education and uh, we, we have seen that um, trend in the higher education uh, teaching that is we are uh, focus we are focusing more and more on profession oriented education and uh, uh, students who uh, who enjoy the, their their uh, their academic life in STEM, and they can get uh, uh, well paid. And it, especially in China, people, uh, students always have the first choice to go to the STEM uh, uh, subjects, not go to the STEAM subjects like arts and uh, social sciences. So in these status, uh, some, someone would say, it's the crisis in humanities. No one would like to continue on these humanities. Why? Maybe it's outdated or not. I think the idea, the work, the, uh, the spirit in humanities will never be outdated, but we need to update. We need to update the uh, tools and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, facilities we use to make the others more interested and uh, more um, uh, get more uh, good exper ex experiences. I'm sorry. Uh, so humanities, uh, we need to improve the popularity uh, by uh, meeting more needs on the uh, profession or on the it's on the user friendly uh, platform, and uh, we have found that humanities are more and more affected by modern technologies like the uh, online teaching uh, websites like MOOC and uh, Dolingo, which combine the digital uh, technology with the humanities. And how can the digital humanities help in this trend? We can do in two ways. The first way is we can use digital human humanity technology uh, to help humanity scholars in their search, in their research, such as we can do some research, use the computer re uh, computerization to collect data, to clear data, uh, to do some data mining and uh, and knowledge discovery. So that's the first thing we can do to help in the research. And the second thing is we can do something to help in teaching. 
to use modern ways, use modern tools and、uh, methods to help students or the teachers、uh, get more familiar with the contents. So、uh, we we found that、uh, more and more di digital humanity centers are appeared in the world.、Uh, now there are、uh, more than two hundred DHCs in the world.、Uh, And、uh, I did the first、uh, investigation at the U.S. universities by this、uh, way. So first, I googled digital humanities at the name of the universities. I tried、uh, about 100 names according to the U.S. news, the 100 universities,、uh, and then I got uh, 60 uh, results that the universities has. The digital centers, digital humanity centers, and then I went to the dhcenternet.org, and then I got about thirty-seven results. After、uh, unduplicated, I got eleven results, and then I went to the National Humanities Center. I got another five. So totally, there was seventy-eight university library DHC. And here is the uh, geographical uh, allocation, uh, geographical、um, distribution of the DHCs. We can find that this distribution is、uh, has the、uh, relationship with the、uh, higher education uh, uh, campus. And then, oh, it's a test for you. Can you read such kind of <laughs> characters? <laughs>、uh, these are the digital humanity center projects subjects. <laughs> yeah,、uh, the first subject is resources construction, and the second one is services. This one is the resource construction and services. Plus services. This one is academic research. This one is、uh, services plus re research, and this one is all of them, three of them. And we can see that in this one, this services services has been the most popular subjects in digital humanity centers projects. It, that means most. Most of the、uh, projects are focused on the services, and these services are divided into such kind of、uh, parts like、uh, resources construction and research, and then the sec、uh, the first one is、uh, resources construction and、uh, services and research, and the second one is、uh, research construction and.、Um, Resources.、Uh, this one is about the higher level organizations. I don't know if I have given the exact word. I mean,、uh, which the DHCs affiliated to. Yeah,、uh, and、uh, we we found that、uh, libraries are the most popular. Uh, higher level organizations than are the colleagues and the whole university. And this one is what we have done with all of these different、uh, services. We I have divided the services into these parts. The first one is tools. Second one is activities, and the third one is help teaching resources. Teaching aided resources, and the fourth one is individual services, and the others. We can find that、uh, the most、uh, active part is the activities. We have this. Uh, this uh, darker one means we have such kind of、uh, activities services. The、um, thinker one means we have no such services. So. This one is the most popular part. That is the activities, and then tools. Tools.、Uh, what kind of tools、uh, the DHCs provided? First one, 
we can see that databases construction and searching services is the uh, most popular tools which was provided by Princeton, Princeton and Columbia University. And then comes the data analysis software or equipment support such as three dim dimension printing, uh, for example, Notre Dame, UT Austin, and GEO. And the third one is GIS tools support, uh, like the U Chicago have provided. And then about the services, 35% uh, of DHC provide support for searching and data analysis and research tools as we have imagined what the DHC should do is what we have uh, expected. And 26% of DHC has independent spaces or building. Uh, I have searched online that if we need such kind of spaces or building, is it, in, is, is it very important? Uh, actually, it's one very important factor to uh, evaluate one DHC because if you have uh, special independent spaces and uh, equipments, you can uh, serve the customers uh, more conveniently. So space is a, a very important factor. 26% uh, DHCs has in independent spaces or building. This one is a little less than in the United Kingdom. And 50% of DHC conduct document digitalization projects. Uh, in my opinion, I would like to uh, divide the digital uh, humanities projects into four stages. The first one is digitalization, resources digitalization. The second one is metadata and linked data, linked data uh, making. And the third one is uh, give some services or tools to the others. And the highest stage should be research cooperation with different parts. That's my opinion. And then uh, I found 50% of the uh, current DHCs, they conduct document digitalization projects. Yes, we stay on digitalization, uh, but not focused more on the uh, uh, services or the research collaboration. And 76 of DHC hold DH activities regularly, like the roundtable conferences, seminar symposium, and uh, uh, like workshop or other activities like exhibition or help teaching. Um, and 50% of DHC provides teaching support and other 42% uh, DHC offers individual services such as consulting, project support, technical guiding and data support. So this is, uh, this chart uh, uh, give us an example about uh, some uh, digital humanity centers who can provide a special uh, individual services like Columbia University. It can give the academic commons and Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It gives the undergraduate research opportunities. And Michigan State, they give the cultural heritage and informatics initiative and Emory and other places. Uh, this one is about the uh, project numbers and uh, versus to the university um, DHCs. Uh, these dots expressed uh, how many projects are linked to these universities. I classified the university DHC pro uh, projects into four different groups according to the numbers of the projects they have conducted. A is more than 65, to B is 25 to 65, and C is 1 to 24, and D is none. And uh, this is the uh, collaboration numbers 
uh, versus the university DHCs. So uh, I also classified it, uh, it into four different levels. And the third one is about institution resources versus the university DHCs. It's also divided into four levels too. Why I want to do such kind of things? Because I want to just to classify the different DHCs into uh, one uh, according to to one system and uh, and divided them into different levels so the integrated levels of the dhc should be like this the three stages in in its development is resources digitalization research resources and services and collaboration so the a level DHCs means academic research and services and research construction. There are 23 about them. And the second one is academic research and services or and academic research and resource research is 27. And the third level, we have services and resource construction and services. And the, the last one is resources construction. So uh, I have found that Emory and Michigan State got three A's. So they are in the uh, first uh, groups. And uh, now we come to the funding part. Uh, there are 41 fund foundation in total, and two main foundation are found, that is Mellon and NEH, like the uh, projects we have got here in our DSC is from Mellon. And I compared Mellon and NEH about the projects they funded and the subjects they covered. I mean, the, the DHCs that have been funded by these two foundation, I just compared two groups of the DSCs and uh, I compared their projects uh, uh, and uh, uh, I compared the subjects and collaboration levels. Uh, we can find uh, we can find that uh, the first one, uh, all all of the lefts are melon funded uh, projects, and the, all the rights are the NEH funded uh, projects. We have found that here uh, for the projects. Um, a-level projects, there is none of that two uh, foundations, no A's. And here, for the subjects covered, we, we have just classified the subjects covered level into four levels. So here, we, we, can, find that, we can find that uh, for Mellon Foundation, 42% of its uh, funding uh, uh, objects has got A's. That means subjects uh, are widely covered uh, who get the uh, melon, uh, melon fund funding. And uh, in this one, collaboration numbers, uh, we found that this one, that is uh, the, funded, the projects funded by NEH, um, it got more popular in, in this C and in, in the melon projects, uh, 42 is about the D part. So this one is not so good as NEH. So the conclusions here about the United States higher education uh, DHCs, uh, it is like that, higher level in DH projects construction. Uh, and plenty of funding, especially from Mellon and NEH, diversity resources for teaching and academic research, focus on history, archives, computer technology, literature, and languages at their, uh, at their subjects. And library is the main backbone of the DHCs because 60% of DHCs with independent spaces are affiliated to libraries. 
and there are only 70% of DHCs offering, offering who can offer academic programs are affiliated to colleges. That means 30% of that will goes to library. And individual services has been one of the trend, trends in DHC's functions. This is the first part, and uh, the second one is uh, the projects at the UK uh, universities. I would like to uh, fasten the speed. <laughs> and uh, first about the spaces and the facilities, uh, we. Do you still remember that 26 of that uh, 26 uh, percentage of the university library DHCs uh, have the spaces? And here we can find that 25 of the 84 investigated DHCs had their independent research uh, spaces and buildings, and other 47 are planning to construct their independent leading labs. So. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it has the comparatively uh, advantage in this place. And outstanding DH Center uh, research space example is University of Exeter DHC. It is known as the uh, leading lab in UK higher education DHC. It has the largest number of the data analysis and data development technology in England. And uh, for their higher level org organization, uh, we found that um, the organization relating to the focus, staffing, and funding, we can get, give a definite uh, conclusion. Relationship between <coughs> the libraries and DHCs, one third of the DHC located in libraries, and the online across the art of Liverpool DHC projects, list the great uh, uh, Britain Library, Oxford uh, University Library, and University of London Library as its partner. I, means, uh, I mean that uh, this one has uh, many more uh, good partnership and other cooperation includes pressures, collection sharing, and other projects. And here is the staffing of DHC in the liberal arts colleges. We can find that uh, this uh, uh, larger part is the teaching faculty. Although it's, uh, uh, I see it's in colleagues, so colleges, so most of its parts are in a teaching faculty. But we can see still many others from libraries. And the staffing in DHC in computer center, uh, almost uh, almost uh, one uh, half half of that staff comes from the technical staff, and then comes uh, the faculty members. So, uh, computer center has the uh, less uh, librarians in their center, uh, digital humanity center. And uh, for the DHC in libraries, staffings, there is uh, no doubt libraries, librarians has been the uh, most bigger part, the, the bigger part uh, in these staffings. And here, the, uh, about the government, governing uh, mode, parallel leadership, like executive directors, different executive directors, they share the governing rights. Uh, the example is Glasgow uh, University. It, they uh, have combined to uh, get to, to uh, form the central boards and they share the rights in uh, project progress control, financial management and administration and other things. And here, the, is the dean assumes overall responsibility is about 36 DHCs over 84 DHCs is about 43%. The example is University of London. And uh, we can see here the dean the dean holds the right, and it, it has the uh, goodness to conduct 
the others very smoothly. And then here the collaboration government by the committee, by faculty from different colleges. And there are different consulting services like project consulting, technology consulting, and collaboration consultings. This service type includes platform consulting, collaboration, and technical services. Numbers of the subjects covered, we can see the uh, top five is history, archaeology, modern linguistics, which is uh, different from the U.S. Uh, academic libraries because the U.S. I think the third one is uh, computer science, computer technologies, and then the main foc focus is computer simulation and modeling, natural language processing, and GIS. So, although we can see the the projects, the subjects is not focused on computer computerization, but the focus of the projects are more concentrated on these technical parts. And financial aids from two main sources, that is uh, AHRC and G GISC. So the, we come to the conclusions, good uh, infrastructure basis because they have more spaces and more uh, independent building. And uh, the governing modes uh, uh, differentiate uh, very widely. Participatory management by faculty plus dean authorization is the most popular mode. And a diverse, diversified service and collaboration we can see from the different projects. And the last one is the digital humanity development in China public libraries. I would like to show only the pictures here. These are the uh, DHCs in public libraries. We have surveyed on the uh, 31 provinces in China. And we found it, uh, all these uh, digital humanity centers are uh, uh, the, their density are more popular in these south, uh, southeastern parts, and this southeastern parts is the economical developed parts in China. So we have formed that uh, uh, synthesis to think that maybe there are some relationship between these DHC projects and the economic stations. Um, situations, so we uh, we made some uh, investigations. We have uh, collected the statistics of the economy stations in China for the past five years to get the uh, to get the mean, to get the standard standard uh, numbers, and then we compared. This is the uh, Chinese economic station mm. and we we can see this one uh, these parts are more popular in China and we found the core relationship between the two parts one is the economic status and the others is the uh, DHC density and the, uh, this one is for the uh, density what is the density? I mean, uh, there are more DHCs in this place than in other places, than in other provinces. And this one is about the economic index versus distribution of subjects. We can also see the relationship, corresponding relationship between them. And the information technology inf infrastructure versus this DH project's distribution density, we can also find the relationship. That means we, we use the, uh, we use the uh, data of the in information infrastructure or infor informalization data in China to compare with this uh, project distribution. And then we compare that with the uh, subject's distribution. 
they are uh, relating. And uh, we can find this one. We have um, made the hypothesis that if one place is uh, good at uh, ha heritage, historical heritage, or cultural, cultural places, it should have more DHCs. But here we can find that there is no such relation relationship. And then uh, local humanity resources versus this project's subject distribution, they do have some relationship. And how we get this local humanity uh, uh, resources, we use the uh, two or three uh, indexes. One is the world heritage, culture heritage resort. The other one is the five stars resorts in China. We use these two indexes to compare to this subject's distribution, and we find some uh, relationship between them. The cre conclusions is uh, GDP affects public library DH projects development in both geographical distribution dens density and the subjects covered. Information infrastructure also affects these two things. And cultural infra uh, infrastructure, we calculated by the places listed in World Heritage List and the local five A's, five stars resorts. It affects the subjects covered by the public library DH projects, but has no relation with the distribution density of the projects. That's what I have interest, uh, I, I have investigated here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know we only have limited time, but thank you so much. So gave us some of just, you know, what your research, I know it's not just this year and a half here, but it's over the years you did in the yeah. of humanities. Yeah. Any questions or comments and any other questions to ask on her research? Yes, Mark. First, I want to thank Sophie for the hard work she did and, <laughs> uh, and her collegiality and her work with the library it was, it was superlative. And it was a very good experience for the library to be associated with you. You should be very proud of what you've done here. Thank you. Thank and, you so much. I'm, and, I'm very glad I have this chance to come here. And I have a question about your research. Yeah. Um, I find it very interesting that China uh, centers its digital humanities projects in public libraries as mm. opposed to universities. Mm. Why do you think that is the case? Why is it associated with cultural institutions rather than a university? I, I'm not sure, but I guess uh, because the public libraries have shouldered the uh, duty to uh, expand the uh, culture uh, effects uh, and to get more cultural uh, education to normal people. So it has such kind of function. It's a tradition. But in, uh, in uh, higher education institutions, we have noticed this trend. And there are more and more uh, uh, academic libraries who focused, uh, which focused on this field, but not so many. I have found in the last two years that there has been uh, about, I think, uh, 20, 20 libraries, uh, about 20 libraries, but not so many, like here. Do you think that the United States and the United Kingdom would benefit from expanding digital humanities centers to public libraries as well? Uh, you mean the, uh, the uh, public libraries here? Yes. Uh huh. I think uh, there is always relationship between the, this knowledge field and the uh, practice field. If we can exchange the technologies and the traditions we have used in the public libraries. You know, we, we, we have the traditions to do such kind of uh, uh, 
uh, humanity projects in museums, in libraries, and other cultural institutions, they have best practices. So we should share our technologies with the best practices. I, I may provide some of the background information <laughs> for Mark's question, uh, if uh. you will, Sophie. Mm. The, sure. the public library system in the China is different than the U.S. public library system. In the U.S., most of public library are focused on the service rather than the research. Only New York public, public library, Boston public library, those kind of huge library have the research arm. That's not the case in the China. Chinese public library, like the pre provincial library Sophia mentioned, they all have a research arm, huge research arm and investment. So that gave them the ability to engage the research center like the digital humanities, digital scholarship, right? Um, on the other side, academic library system is also slightly different with the priorities in China and the U.S. Mm -hmm. Most of the academic library system at this moment, Sophie already mentioned, are very focused on STEM, STEM of the investment. Most of their money investment actually put into the collection dollars to buy in the expensive westernized, western produced research journals, database. So they invest very little on the humanities uh, research, including digital humanities. So I can see the, the, the because of this system different, called the, 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 the library system different, I think the, what the, the, the Sophia found, the research funding was very interesting, aligned with my observation yeah. about the China library system. Thank you, Sophie, for working with us. <laughs> it's been uh, delightful. And I feel really good about your presentation because when you first came, you remember that I, I gave you a lot of reading to do, a lot of research yeah. articles. Yeah. So I'm seeing this all come together in the presentation because, you know, Sophie is a professor, so it's appropriate that you know, she focused on the yeah, I still remember I have less knowledge about that. Right, so this, this is really interesting for me to see you know, how you have progressed through all that. that Thank you for your help. Huge of information at the very beginning. And also, uh, I wanted to mention that one of the things that Sophie was able to do while she was here was to participate in some faculty searches. Uh -huh. you know, you, she sat in on sessions, for example, uh, for the history department search for a, a public history digital humanities professor. Uh. So and that added, that was just another example of one of the things that added to her experience here because she is a professor in her own institution. So. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You're mentioning about GIS. I think uh, it's the geographic information systems. Can you just elaborate on how exactly that is being used? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't understand, sorry. <laughs> you able to understand. You know, the reference was made to GIS. I understand that is geographic information systems. Yeah. Uh -huh. How exactly is it being used? Uh, what, what are the features of GIS which are being explored here? How, how would you make a TV sheet? 那个地理系统，你在你的调查中，你觉得他们是怎么用的？GIS系统。嗯。Okay, oh. okay, it's one of the parts that have been uh, researched. Uh, they always use that uh, GIS information for like uh, the local cultural heritage or the transition of different people. Like I, I know. One of the projects that uh, Masha Zeng has uh, presented to us that she uh, used the data for, from the uh, art museum uh, and he, uh, she researched about the routine, the, the life, tra life trackings when the artists moving from one place to the other place. They use the big data, not only some people's and uh, 
in what period they move from one place to other places and why they move at that kind of period, not in the other time. Okay. <laughs> Did yes. I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Where, which department are you from? I'm from railways. Where? Railways in India. Oh, good. He's visiting his son here. Oh, he visited his yeah. son? Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, last but not least, we have some gifts for oh, Sophie. You. And also, I want to say um, the reason Sophie and the previous visiting scholars could make it here cannot be. I, I have to say thank you for the D, for Shimao, for your support. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, it's actually visiting scholar contact you, and then you make sure that this person comes here. Definitely, you contribute, uh, you work a lot with our. Uh, colleagues here and also bring your own expertise in your research and I think that's something what I see different from visiting scholars from other colleges so I want to thank you too. So we have the certificate I would like <laughs> the Dean to give to Sophie and the gifts from our colleagues to you. If I give to you, thank you Sophie and um, for the very productive the research and the resident with our libraries here. Um, your presentation was really speaks about the, how much you have done and how much you have learned and also how much you have contributed to our library system and to, to the countries here. So thank you very much. I also like to take this opportunity to thank those people who helped Sophie, starting with Han and the uh, staff from the press, from the DSC and from anybody you work with. I remember I interviewed Sophie about 18 months ago in one of the China conference when she first gave me the proposal and she wants to come here to, to spend a year uh, with us. So I interviewed her. I quickly get a uh, very good impression about you have a research agenda and most importantly, you have the very strong desire and the joy you want to come to this country to study. So I'm glad you think she is beautiful. This certificate <laughs> is for your good memory, and you can frame them and have in your office in the future. Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank so you. Oh, by the way, the Sophie's presentation was I uh, found it very interesting. She mentioned that she come to this country quickly to learn how to drive. <laughs> but, uh, uh, she learned how to drive safely and quickly. Yeah. Uh, I hope that quickly now turns to speedy. Yeah. <laughs> no. I hope you drive safely, that's the most important. I have about two laws. <laughs> All right, thank you. And then some of the gifts from ah, okay. This is just a book about Cincinnati. I hope you have some good memories of our oh. city. Very good book about Cincinnati. And uh, it's not from our press, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not yet. So thank you. Oh, thank you, you so much. Okay. Oh, with the Cincinnati? Yes, yes. University of Cincinnati. University of Penn. And thank a water so bottle because Sophie <laughs> and her family is going to be on the road trip okay. next week too. By the way, where is the water coming from school? Stay hydrated. Uh, same thing. I'm sorry. Come here. Where is her daughter going to school? Uh, Claremont McKenna College. It's one of oh, the... Oh, Claremont? Uh, yeah. In, in, the, in the California? California. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the liberal yeah. arts college, I remember. It's a liberal yeah. arts college. Excellent it's liberal arts college. Five colleges. Yeah. Um, they have a wonderful economics school. Good. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank, for that thank you. Well. Anybody have any question to ask the Sophie? No? Please Otherwise, keep in touch. Thank Please you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you sure. Very much. And I want to say thank you so much for all of you and I hope I can meet any of you in China. <laughs> I'd be a very good guy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, her city is close the border uh, with the Hong Kong, pretty close to Hong Kong. So if yeah. you go to the Hong Kong, you should think about visiting Sophia in the yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay? Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah, well, thank you. 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 Thank